So welcome back everybody. My name's Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. And if this is your first time visiting the channel, hey, we appreciate you stopping by. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. We post weekly videos. All right, so in today's episode, it's project time. We're having a bad problem with carpenter bees around here. It's very common in the South. Actually, our last home that uh, we sold a couple years ago, the shed out there was just ate alive by carpenter bees. And eventually it can cause some serious structural concerns. So if you're not familiar with carpenter bees, a lot of people confuse them with bumblebees. They are not the same at all. Carpenter bees, well, they have carpenter in the name for a reason because they like to actually bore into wood. So they'll do that, they'll lay their larva, and basically this becomes their home right there. And the big problem with that is it makes structural issues with, well, things like our porch right here and my pole barn out there. So I have a pole barn that I built that's only about two years old and I'm already starting to get drilled holes in a lot of the two by six purlins. That's an issue. It has to support the roof and what if I need to get up there to do repairs or walk around in the future? I don't need a single board with a bunch of drilled holes in it losing its structural integrity. So on today's video, we've got a bunch of scrap four by fours I've had laying around. We're gonna build some carpenter bee traps. There is tons of videos on the internet of people doing this. Uh, so obviously I can't take credit for the design. I don't know if anybody can. This has been around a long time and there's so many videos on there. I seriously doubt anybody that you're watching was the original creator of this. So essentially what we're gonna do is cut some blocks out here. Carpenter bees are attracted to wood. We're gonna bore some holes in it and supposedly they're quite lazy. If they see a hole that's already bored into wood, they're gonna go use that as their home instead of drilling a new hole. At least that's the theory and what we're gonna find out. So the reason I'm gonna build and test these is, you see a lot of people on the internet saying, hey, these things work great. And then you see a lot of comments of, I didn't catch a single bee. These do not work at all. So the best way to know is let's build some right now and let's put them out for a few days and test and see if we can take care, or at least put a dent in our carpenter bee problem to help extend the life of our homes, our porches and our outbuildings. So typically you buy pressure treated lumber um, to kind of ward off bugs. And I'm kind of nervous about using four by four blocks that are pressure treated, although these are very old and have been outside for quite a while. I'm sure they have lost some of their effectiveness, but I, I'm curious to maybe try a second set. We may build another set in another episode out of just regular two by four sandwiched together, which is untreated wood. But I see a lot of people online, actually everybody I have watched takes four by four blocks and builds their traps out of that. And I looked locally, I cannot find any four by fours at any of my local lumber yards that are not treated. So we're gonna start out with that. And if these don't seem to be effective, we'll go to some untreated lumber and just have to sandwich it and stack it. Doesn't look as good, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully this design right here works as intended. So I think I'm just gonna cut me a bunch of blocks four inches long, there's no rhyme or reason here. The most important thing is the hole that we're gonna drill. So let's go ahead and get several of these cut because I wanna put quite a few out in a couple of different places. All right, so the concept is quite simple. We'll take a block that we just cut out here. We'll drill a hole right through the center. And most people recommend somewhere around a one inch hole. I happen to have a seven eighths of an inch drill bit. That looks plenty big enough. So we'll go and we'll drill close to coming all the way through. Not quite, but we'll get this more toward the surface. Then we'll come back behind it with a half inch drill bit and come in at an angle. What we're gonna do is start and drill a hole in close to a 45 degree angle up into the center hole and we'll make several around this. So the theory is as the bees fly to this hole that they see, which looks like a normal made hole by them, they'll crawl up at an angle, see the light coming from underneath because we're gonna mount a mason jar here and they'll crawl down into the jar. But because these holes are at an angle, and the jar is lit up from the outside sun, they supposedly can't see how to go back up and climb back out and they stay trapped in the glass. I'll show you that here in a second once we get everything put together. All right, then we'll take our half inch bit. And now that we have the hole somewhat close to the center, I'm a little off there, we'll come back more toward the bottom and I wanna drill back up at an angle. Okay. 
then you're left with a hole like that that goes in at close to a 45 degree angle and comes out in our larger hole. Make sure these holes are cleaned out good so the bee can actually crawl through there. Okay, go ahead and get all the splinters out. All right, let me go ahead and knock the rest of these out and we'll start putting these together. So next we need to install a way to hang these. And it just so happens I have a bunch of old fence staples laying around. You can get creative and coming up with whatever you want. So keep in mind, if you're gonna drill a hole all the way around and actually hang these to where they can float out in the air, Go ahead and put your staple right in the middle and don't beat it all the way down and you connect it with string, you know, whatever else you want. Now, since I did not drill a hole on this side, I'm actually gonna mount this two posts that are all around my barn. I wanna put my staple close to the rear so I can shoot a screw through and actually mount these to the pole. I think that'll be just a cheap, easy way and I already have these staples. Now, I'm gonna put this staple in at a slight angle so it doesn't blow out the back side of the wood there. And that's plenty. Now I can shoot my screw into that and actually hang this against the post. So a quick tip, if you actually put your staple down in the center like that, and you wanna flip this over and work on it, you can take two pieces, put that staple right down in there and work, and now you can attach your stuff on the bottom side. But because I've got my staple all the way to the rear, this will sit flat on a work surface and we can move on to the next step. So I've got some old mason jars here because I do a lot of canning on the channel as well. These were ones I was gonna clean and reuse, but we use them for this. And I've got some brand new lids. You can use old lids to save even more money. So what I've seen a lot of people do online, and this drives me crazy, is they'll actually hold this and try to go ahead and drill a hole through here because you need the same size hole through this as you have right here, or close to it. Well, that's a good way to cut yourself up. It never works. The drill bit winds up catching in this and tears out and makes rough jagged edges. So just go ahead and center your lid over the hole as best you can. All right, so what you do is take a lid, actually pop it in just like that, center it over that hole, center hole that you drilled, and then shoot a couple of nails in through the lid or screws. I'm using some big headed screws here. And you wanna make for sure that you do not put nails or screws down through the actual holes. So you wanna offset them because if you will, you pin a nail through the hole that the bug's supposed to go in, it can no longer access it. And you wanna make for sure that your nails and screws are far enough to the inside lip that they do not affect your jar being screwed on. Now you can see where we're heading with this. Now here's the beautiful thing about the lid already being connected on the inside. Now I don't have to hold it like I see a lot of people do and they're trying to drill it and it's catching and about to cut you to pieces. The screws are holding it for me. Just roughly eyeball center. We're not trying to get exact here. And I'm using a step bit and you can use a standard drill bit, whatever you want, but this step bit works really well for doing this. And now get all that metal out of there. Now that just held it for us. We got our hole drilled and now we have a working trap. So we'll screw our jar on here. And what I'll do is take just an old drywall screw here, put a washer on the end. And now look, I can go through this nail, screw into the post, this pins it to it. And I don't have to worry about these falling and dropping and breaking glass out here on my patio area. So now you can see better what's going on. The bee flies onto the woods. Hey, I see a hole that's already drilled for me. I'm gonna be lazy today, I don't have to do no work. It crawls up any one of these three holes right here, climbing in at an angle because it's seeing light that's coming up through this bottom hole through this clear mason jar. And it'll climb over, come down through that hole. Well, dadgum, it's gonna go ahead and just fly on off and go find another hole. Now it's trapped in the jar because it can't find another hole. And apparently they're not smart enough to look back up and see that dark hole that's up there because there's not enough light coming through. They're seeing wide open spaces that they don't know what glass is and they're trying to get out um, and you've got them trapped. So now you can dispose of them however you want to. That's the theory at least. Let's see if this works.
So there's one of the carpenter beads up there right now trying to chew into my wood. Look at him. And actually there's his hole. Watch this. If he finds it, he'll go up there in it. And I chewed a hole straight up in to that tube of six purlin. That's the guys I'm trying to catch right there. They are all over this barn. There he goes, right in that hole. Chewed straight up into that wood. There's another hole. And I'm about to put up a trap right there because I don't know if y'all can see in the side of that board up there. There's one hole, there's another hole. They are starting to eat my barn alive. So since I'm having to work off a ladder over here, it's easier for me to just to carry up a single nail and a hammer instead of a drill, screws, washers, all that good stuff. So I'm using some extra long roofing nails that have a big head on there. And these should work very well for getting up in to that nail and keeping it from ever sliding off. Plus it's not the absolute end of the world if one of these fall off out here under the barn, it's gonna hit dirt, it may not even break. And well, if it does, it's easy cleanup. This isn't a porch where we're walking around potentially barefooted. Uh, they haven't got super bad out here, but they are definitely eating this barn up. I got several to put up out here. Also really having to look out for wasp nests while I'm up here too, especially banging around with this hammer. y'all so it has been three days and we have some activity i don't know if y'all can see in that jar right there actually that one's still been moving around a little so i'm gonna have to be careful there and i've already got the ladder set up over here check this out can you see what's going on in there Still see a little movement there too. I best be careful. All right, this one's still moving around a little. It ain't flying. It's moving more than I like. Get my butt off this ladder. Okay, so here is our whopping two catches. This is what a carpenter bee looks like. Notice the slick abdomen. That's a big key difference between a bumblebee and a carpenter bee. And these are females. You can tell the difference because a female has a solid black head, whereas the male will have what looks like a yellow or white patch right in the middle of the head right there. Here's a little lesson for you. The females are typically the ones that are gonna drill into your wood and make the homes because they're trying to find a spot to lay eggs, hatch larvae, and uh, basically raise their babies. And it's my understanding the males are gonna do like all the other bees, go around taking care of pollen and everything else. So typically you're not bothering the male bees. It's the females that are the really destructive ones. And please somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Also contrary to popular belief, the females do sting. They can sting, although I've never been stung once in my entire life. You've got to really, really provoke them to do that. I don't believe the males can sting. I probably should have researched all this before talking, but I didn't realize we was going to get into talking points and a lesson on bees in this episode too. But hey, it's fun to learn, right? So I had a friend a while back actually catch these bees in his hat. They're just all over his barn. You're, they're literally buzzing around you, eating the wood and going crazy. And he caught and he showed me that there is an actual stinger in a female itself. So I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Had these out for days, like nine of them. Nothing at the house. The good news is I see no new activity at the house too since I painted the porch. I've seen a few carpenter bees, but they tend to mosey on. No new fresh gnawings. And I have heard paint does deter some carpenter bees, but a lot of you viewers have said, hey, I've got a house with painted wood and they've ate right through it. But there's different types of bees too. I'm really hoping these ones down south don't eat through the paint but I've heard from some of y'all, they most likely will. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. So my thoughts on the carpenter bee traps. Well, obviously 
they work, but I was hoping to come out here after a day or two and have every jar with a beer or two in it, you know, high hopes. So I'm standing out here the other day and I'm seeing a carpenter bee buzzing around and it actually gets right near the trap that's over behind you. I was like, oh wow, I'm gonna watch one actually fly into the trap work. It flew, buzzed around the hole looking at it. Yes, here we go, here we go. And then it flew on down the bo uh, barn. I was like, okay, what's going on there? I watched it light on a piece of wood and I'm watching it. Then it climbs in its hole. Then I realized here it is almost June in Florida. So basically summertime. And some of y'all mentioned, hey, we've had our carpenter bee traps out for a couple of months. And then it all clicked. Now that there's holes drilled everywhere, you're seeing less female activity because well, they've already made a home. Why are they gonna fly in another hole? Why are they gonna fly in this looking for a new home when they already have eggs and larvae hatched somewhere? and they're taking care of them. They could care less about making a new home. So that's kind of my theory and thought. I've put these out too late. I would love to hear y'all's theories and thoughts. So my thought says, hey, I've got to have these out in early spring. That's two to three months ago here in Florida. You know, uh, the birds and the bees talk is probably happening back then. And I have a feeling that's when the females are coming out right after winter. We need to make us a home. And if they see a easy, home, an easy target right here with a whole lot in it, I have a feeling I'd catch a whole lot more in the spring. Once they have made a home and they have babies to take care of, they could care less about flying in these traps. Although, I guess occasionally you're gonna get lucky and get one that maybe forgot where it was at, maybe a little late in the season and it's looking for a new home or just curiosity killed the cats, what I'm thinking here. So I'm not expecting high hopes for the rest of the season, but I would love to hear from y'all. What's your thoughts on, should I have had these out earlier? Are these things a gimmick? Do they really work? I see them sold everywhere. I see a lot of people making them and I see them on a lot of people's porches and hear good stories about them. So I have to think that they do work. Drop me a comment down there. Let me know your thoughts on these if you have good luck with them. And I may build even more because sadly, I got to looking around here this morning. There is about twice as many holes up here in my tube of six purlins as I even realize. And I'm sure I'm not seeing them all. So these little jokers are starting to be quite destructive to my brand new, very expensive barn. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I love making little projects like this, testing things out. We've got more in the works already. Actually, I have some different types of traps that I just built that are already set on the property. So we've got some more videos coming and we have some really awesome house project videos coming as well. Thank you all for watching.